Well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to, to, to this meeting. I'm delighted to, to be here and, and to, to have the opportunity to discuss the, this, this, uh, these states. So usually we work on hydrogen, yes? so, so it seems a bit paradoxical that we now move to, to something uh, that has so many electrons that it's hopeless to, to understand. So uh, it will be clear that it's hopeless later in the talk, but uh, I will try to, to give a few ideas uh, about what we think is happening. So with, with an introduction, uh, I, had, I have removed several slides after Wim uh, introduced the topic so well. And um, so then I will talk about the photoionization of Cl2. Uh, because we believe that the photoionization gives us some hints about the formation of the uh, of the ion pair state if you do it optically from the ground state, and then I will talk about uh, our result on the ion pair formation in CL2 and the conclusions. So and this is the work of the thesis of uh, Sandro Mollet. You, you see him here in, in the lab. So this is what I've remained of my. Introduction is just uh, a contrast uh, between Cl2 and, and H2, and where I have also included an energy diagram where you see the, the, the potential curve of the ground state of Cl2, the potential curve of the ground state of Cl2 plus ion, and what I've drawn also are the low-lying threshold for the formation of ion per Cl plus per Cl minus, and, and, and the values are here. So what makes it a bit different from, from hydrogen uh, though, are that chlorine is heavier than hydrogen, so you get the, uh, the Wittberg constant, if you calculate it in the way that has been shown by Elizabeth and Wim, is about 30,000 uh, 30, times larger than uh, the Wittberg constant for the hydrogen atom, and 35 ta times larger than for H plus H minus. So it's uh, more than a heavy Wittberg system, if you call this a heavy Wittberg system. So, so chlorine has a huge uh, electron affinity of this, the, the atom with the largest electron affinity of all atoms. This is the value, so, so it's um, more than 3.5 electron volt. And that brings, then, if, if you start from the limit, the dissociation limit into uh, chlor atoms, it brings down the ion pair threshold by this amount. And the lowest ion pair threshold is close to the lower vibrational level of these of this, uh, uh, ionic states. Now, chlorine has natural isotopes that you have in the mixture. So when you look at Cl2, you always also look, you look at three different molecules, and you can try to see uh, resonances that occur in some and, uh, and not in others, and you see pronounced isotopic effect, perhaps. And then the most interesting thing for, for us was the fact that uh, chlor, uh, chlorine uh, plus is, is a triplet or as two unpaired electrons, and there are five low-lying states, and then you have five thresholds, and then we have represented them here. Uh, so this, we are be mostly talking about these three uh, triplet P states, and then a little bit about this single D state. So, oh, I'm on the wrong side. So now th this is the, the, the slides that corresponds to what has been said earlier. Uh, so it's a Coulomb problem when you are at large distances and, and you, uh, so you can view Cl2 plus as a, as a, positively, a positive charge and an electron and you have the, the classical H atom uh, type problem with a, with a Coulomb potential. And here you have Cl plus Cl minus, which also uh, is a Coulomb problem at long range. And then you can then decide to treat this in the Wittberg picture, and then you, you get the, the scaling that's been discussed before. So important is the, is the reduced mass, or the ratio of the reduced mass to the mass of the electron. And then it gives the, the Wittberg constant of, of uh, chlorine uh, as uh, 3.5 times 10 to the 9 centimeter to the minus 1. So it's about, as I said, about 35 times bigger than, than in H2. And then the, the ball radius in the system is one femtometer, so it's the size of the nucleus. So you can see immediately that the low end states in this are just uh, uh, fictive states. And actually, it's, you start having uh, ion pairs that are bigger than a chlor atom uh, when you get around uh, several hundreds of the principal quantum number. So and now, for the spectroscopy, there are two things. I have two sets of numbers. If you take a binding energy of 100 centimeter to the minus 1, then you are at the principal uh, quantum number of 33 in the hydrogen atom. But in the chlorine ion pair, you are almost at 6,000. 
I mean, the, the energy spacing is 6.04 centimeters to minus 1, so it's easy to resolve spectroscopically. Here it's 1 gigahertz, and it becomes much more difficult. Now, if we do the same at an equal, uh, is now compare instead of a, at a fixed energy, so 100 centimeters to the minus 1 below the limit, if you now compare for the same n value, then you have uh, for the Wigberg system, so hydrogen, a spacing of 1 gigahertz approximately and a binding energy of 3 centimeters to the minus 1. So it's, you can still resolve that easily. If you go to the ampere system, uh, the sorry, that's the spacing and that's the binding energy. So the spacing here is huge, yeah, almost 1,000 centimeters to the minus 1, like a vibrational spacing in the ground state. And the binding is in the 90,000 centimeter to minus 1, so more than 10 electron volt. So here again, you see this is only fictive. Yeah, it would be uh, almost below, below the ground state. So and this, I, I used, of course, the, the, the scaling that is presented in, in, in uh, uh, Wim's article. So what, what did you want to do? So usually, I only chose to work on hydrogen if I can. But because there were so many people working on it and producing results that we couldn't uh, compete with, we decided to, to, to go for something else, and, and that was chlorine. So we, we want to, to try and observe quantum state with very high principal quantum number. To some extent, uh, this was stimulated by a comment by um, uh, Hosan Zandek, but he said it's impossible to see n equal 1,000. But I think he meant in Midberg systems, uh, in iron pair, so it's easy to see n equal 1,000. Uh, we want to study the mechanism by which these states are formed from the ground state. We want to find out what, the, what channel couplings uh, are and how strong they can be and try to, if possible, determine them. And then once you measure iron pair threshold, you always have access to further thermo thermochemical properties. They are boring, but very useful. So this is how we do experiments, a simple experiment. We have a VUV laser, which we can scan uh, in this range for the experiment that we talk about, 96,000 centimeters to the minus 1 to 116,000 centimeters to the minus 1. And we do that by fully mixing in krypton and argon. It's quite standard. So we have two dial laser, and then we focus pulse dial laser, uh, and pumped by neodymium yag laser. We, we focus them below a, a nozzle, producing um, a beam of, of the nonlinear gas krypton or xenon, and then we generate VUV, we separate it with a monochromator, and then we do the spectroscopy here. Here we have a supersonic beam of chlorine, and then we can choose to detect the ions, the cations, the electrons, and we do that mass selectively here. And then part of this uh, is also used in our uh, measurement where we measure very high Wittberg state, so we know typically what our stray fields are, and then we, it's highly magnetically shielded. So this is now a, an important slide for what we are doing. And I want to point out that um, in the group of John Hepburn, uh, since 1997, they made the analogy that Wim already pointed out in his talk between field ionization of iron pair states and field ionization of Wittberg states. So what people were doing uh, in, in those days was to use field ionization to measure high resolution photoelectron spectra. And those are the community where I grew up um, as a graduate student. And then in this experiment, what you do, you have a tunable light source. And these are here um, Wittberg series converging in a different quantum state of a molecular ion. And then when you uh, use field ionization, you can detect a very high Wittberg state just below threshold. And then you record a cation spectrum by photoelectron spectroscopy. And then what uh, this was generalized by, by John Hepburn and, and James Martin two iron pair states in those days, and they, they had a very nice article showing uh, that the field ionization process, it's a, it's a, you can treat it as a Coulomb potential plus a field. And then you can, uh, if you add the, the, the Coulomb potential plus the field potential, you get this sort of potential and you lower the ionization limit. And this is also described in, in all the books on, on, on Wittberg physics. And then the, the, the lowering of the, uh, of the ionization limit, if you express it in centimeter to minus 1, is equal to, to this. So 6.1, then uh, there is a root that has disappeared in the processing of this. But here's, here's a root. So uh, and here also, and here also. So somehow the conversion has not worked. But it, so it's root of f. Um, and then uh, once you do pulse field ionization, you have to distinguish between adiabatic field ionization and diabatic field ionization, in which case you get slightly different uh, uh, behavior. So now, uh, how we do our experiments, we're going to detect Cl plus and Cl minus 
as a proof that we are uh, looking at uh, the field ionization of uh, high vibration level of an ampere curve. So, and then we do this in the following way. We have our excitation with, with a laser, and then we do this field free, after which we apply a small electric field, one volt per centimeter typically, and then uh, we wait one microsecond or so. During that time, the ions that have been produced are moved away from the packet of excited uh, uh, ion pair states, and then we can separate them uh, spatially, and when we apply a very large field that will field ionize the states we have prepared, we will be able to separate those that have been uh, produced at the time of the VMV laser from those that are field ionized by these large pulse. So, and this is a proof that it, this works. So this is a, a, actually a method that is known also by chemists as mass analyzed uh, threshold ionization spectroscopy or MATI spectroscopy. So what you see here is, is a typical uh, outcome of such a pulse sequence. You get uh, what we call a prompt signal. So it's that's here for the CL35 plus. Uh, and then you get the field ionized signal, CL35+, plus, and it comes before because we have shifted with this first pulse the prompt signal closer to the detector so they are less accelerated when we apply the large pulse. And here you see the corresponding CL37. And then we, we, when we do a spectrum, we put a gate, a detection gate here, and then we collect the, uh, the signal as a function of the frequency. And then we collect... Uh, we think in general it's not necessary to only look at CL plus, but it's also necessary to look at CL minus, so we collect both. So now I'm going to say something, that's the, the first uh, large part of this talk, so, but say something about the photoionization and threshold ionization of chlorine. And um, so I've taken here the helium one photoelectron spectrum that you can find in, in, the, in, in the literature, that's the, the, the handbook of, of photoelectron uh, spectrum of, of Kimura, and what you see in the, in the helium-1 photoelectron spectrum of chlorine, you see three bands, and they correspond to bands that are formed by ejecting an electron either so, so from the pi g orbital or the pi u or the sigma g. And you have drawn it when you, for the ground states, and you, you have the x state of the ion, the a state, and the b state. And um, so what I've also drawn here are the positions of these uh, ion pair uh, thresholds as arrows. So that's the, the triplet P uh, ion pair, the singlet B, and the singlet S. And what I would like you to, to notice is that these, uh, these uh, photoelectron spectra, they are partially vibrationally resolved. They are, you see, one, two, three, maybe four vibration level, very short Frank Condon progression because the, the, the ionic poten uh, potential and the neutral potential are, are similar, are not too different. And here it's a bit broader, but still uh, not extensive. Now, it turns out that chlorine uh, cation has also doubly excited states. They are the states that you produce when you remove an electron from this pi g cell and promote an electron to this uh, antibonding sigma u orbital. And they lie low, and you have uh, these four. And somehow they are present, and I will show you some evidence that they are present. Now, how do we do it? So when we do a measurement now, a photoionization measurement, we record different types of spectra. So we record first the, the photoionization spectrum, so we collect this, the Cl35, uh, Cl235+, plus, and then the mixed isotope, and the 37. And then we get these curves, and they look typically different. And this is here the uh, adiabatic ionization energy, where we get the, the V equals zero of the ion, this is actually this small one, and you get a bigger one. This is a hot band, but there is a huge resonance that enhances this hot band by a factor of almost 1,000 in, in this case. And then uh, you have then the progression equals 0, 1, 2, 3. And notice there are two spin orbit components. So the, there is the, the lower spin orbit compo component of the ion, WP3 half starts here, and the upper one here. And what you see here as you go up, the density of state increases. This is just because the isotopic shift of coming from the different uh, reduced mass. So then we can measure the, the spectra, and it goes on. So according to the photoelectron spectrum, we should already not have seen this one, which is outside the Frank Condon region, but it, it's there. Uh, and then um, in order to, to make sure that we know what we're doing, we also resolve uh, or partially resolve the rotational structure of these bands. So this is an example from the double prime equals 0 to the V plus equal 2 state of the ion. We see the three uh, clearly resolved the bands 
for 35, 35, 37, and 37. And the, in their intensity, they are roughly what you would expect on the basis of the, of the natural abundances. So this is typical. We know the structure. We know it can only be a band of the X plus state. And that's what we use later to, to try to understand the, the, the spectrum. And now the spectrum should have stopped, but then it goes on. And we, we never see a state missing. So we see v, from V equals 0 is uh, V equal 20, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 29, 30, 31, and so on. And then here, of course, the isotopic shifts uh, become larger. And I've color coded uh, these uh, uh, so that the, the 25 corresponds to the lower spin orbit component. It, they are all indicated in blue, in orange. That's the upper spin orbit component. And then the large bars, they correspond to the main isotopomer, the lower one to the mixed one, and the very small one that corresponds to the 37 uh, uh, dimer. And here, I've, this is here where the second set or, or the second iron pair level is located, just to, for your information. But this spectrum goes on, and you never see any state missing. It goes on here, we are now. Uh, almost 25,000 centimeters to the minus one above the, the lowest vibration level. And you can still uh, notice some vibration level of the X state. And what, what he's born here a little bit in this region, that's the A state. Uh, and that's the, the first actually spectroscopic full characterization of the A state of, of CL2 plus, And it's highly perturbed. You see the vibrational uh, intervals are highly perturbed. So we know that this is the A state because we look at the rotational contours. And we can uh, understand, we, we know enough about uh, doublet pi u state that we can use this contour to assign it. So and here, that's here this state. And you see, we have never missed a single state from the origin all the way here. We see everything. And we actually see even things that shouldn't be there. Um, well, we see, well, maybe, I think it's right at the end of my talk. I'll, I'll show you. So yeah, there, maybe I'll go right at the end. We see also little red things. That uh, Sandro Mollet put this red thing when he cannot assign them. These are uh, states that are neither A, neither B, uh, neither X. And they are quoted states. So this uh, is gives you an overall picture. But the amazing thing here is that there's a mechanism in CL2 that increases the internuclear distance spontaneously. So when you do the threshold ionization, you see all the vibrational levels, and you, CO2 likes to become big. And that's important if you think in terms of ion pair states. So this is the conclusion. We, we, we can uh, resolve this vibrational structure of the X and A state of Cl2+. Plus. We have determined the ionization energy precisely. That's uh, because we want to do also a bit of, of uh, thermochemistry. And then we are amazed by the deviation of the intensities from frank common factors. Some of the states we see, they have frank common factors of 10 to the minus 40. And so it's, they wouldn't, shouldn't be there. It's just uh, they have some mechanism that, uh, uh, or channel coupling that are important. So the photo photonization spectrum is highly congested and dominated by auto-ionization resonance. The, these resonances are typically sharp at low energies, and they broaden as you go up in energy. This is what I put here. So now, this is, I think, a good. Um, preparation for the ion pair states. So you look at the Cl2 molecule, you take an electron away, and somehow there are lots of channels, and they are all coupled, and Cl2 goes towards dissociation. And in this process of going towards dissociation, at some point, they will be caught or notice that there is an ion pair potential at long range, and they will populate these. Or sometimes they will populate these. OK, so now. I come to the, to the part on the, on the heavy Wittberg states. Uh, and then we're going to do exactly what um, John Hedburn and his group did, is to look at, the, at these heavy Wittberg states immediately below the, the ionization limit. So we're going to detect these heavy Wittberg states by field ionization. And we monitor both these two ions. And it's important to realize that the measurement is only sensitive to very high levels. In this case, that would be actually beyond n equal 13,000, and only those that have a lifetime longer than one microsecond. So we cannot see those that are uh, shorter lived than this, because we need to separate uh, the, the ion in the way I described earlier. So this is now I'm going to show you now the, the, the main resonance we have seen in these. And this is the, the resonance that is located 
at the position or just below the position of this threshold where we produce a, uh, the, the CL minus, the full shell system, and the lowest uh, state of CL plus. That's the lowest ion pair level. So this in, in the spectrum, so this is here, uh, a spectrum where we had a chlor minus here, and you, you have uh, in black the, what we call the prompt signal, so those are directly produced by, by the laser, and um, or in black, that's the that's the the Marty and oh, this is wrong. Excuse me. So in 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 red you have the CL thirty seven minus in black the CL thirty five minus and this is the prompt signal and this is the field ionized signal and then that's the prompt signal of thirty seven and the field ionized and the intensity you can directly compare these intensities to see right away that you have a very large resonance in uh, for the for the main isotope and a very weak threshold for the, for the 37 isotope. So much uh, weaker than the isotopic ratio would indicate. And then we get exactly the same spectrum when we do the cation instead of the anion. So we know there that we're really looking at, at ion pair states. And one thing that puzzled us for a long time and still puzzles us a bit is that when you go below the threshold where it's thermodynamically not allowed to produce uh, these, we still see lines. And we s there's two reasons why we see them. One uh, that we, uh, is that we have partially hot band, although we work in, in a supersonic expansion. But uh, most importantly, it looks like our field still field ionizes relatively low ion pair levels in this region. So they survive. But the, the really dominant feature is this one, is that what I, I want to talk about. But I want to make one last comment. We also, in our measurement, measure all the ions, the, the, the molecular ions, and they are represented here. So, and then you see that at the position of the threshold, so actually this orange curve is our VUV intensity that is not totally flat in this region, and this is matched by the form of this state, but you see some additional structure. And what is striking here is that the position where we have a large intensity in this ion pair uh, field ionization threshold, we don't have a large hole in the ion signal. So that seems to indicate that the states that are responsible for the formation of this don't typically ionize uh, into a molecular ion, but they will go predominantly to the, to the ion pair threshold. So we, we have these spectra, uh, all these traces for all, all the molecules and uh, for all the, all the channels, and then uh, we, we take our information from them. And that's where, actually, when you work on CL2, you start regretting H2, because H2 is always beautiful in the spectrum. You always see sharp lines. In, in these molecules, it's never beautiful. Just at this, these are beautiful. The, the ion pair state are beautiful, but all the rest is ugly. Now, I want to give you a sense of the, the strength of these channels. So this is the signal that we take from an oscilloscope when we, do, when we collect the ions. So this is the time of flight, and here we look at the, the cations that are produced, and you see here Cl35+, plus, Cl37+, plus. and here you see the molecular channel. Cl35-2+, Cl35, Cl37, and Cl37-2+. Plus. And when you see this, you realize how weak these ion pair signals are. It's more than a factor of 100 smaller. Uh, extremely minor channel. We can do the same with the anions. In the anions, of course, we don't see the, the molecular signal. We see only the Cl35 minus, Cl37 minus. And these are the electrons that we produce by photoionization. And here again, we see it's really tiny. But when we look at ions, you can always still measure things that are tiny well. And you need just one ion per count, and you can take a good spectrum. Now, I'm going to, to look about the resonance. This sharp resonance I talked to you about, it has an extensive structure. This is here our measurement. So and when we looked at the, when we saw the spectrum, we started saying, well, maybe that's the rotational structure. And we were playing around with, with different uh, things. And the, nothing matches, except when you assume an iron pair uh, Rydberg series with these quantum numbers starting from 1,858 and going up. But, uh, it's not exact, yeah? So in the wings, it's exact, and in the center, it's not exact. And now, when we reconstruct the spectrum, we actually do the following. We assume that there are two resonances, one relatively sharp here, and one relatively broad, and that's superimposed with this resonance. We have one of these. And then we sum up the intensities, and then we get this. So from this spectrum, what, what is it? We have an iron pair, 
uh, Rydberg series, and we have also two resonances, and they are the two resonances that give intensity to, to this ion pair series. So, of course, when you, when you want to make such a claim and not be ridiculed by, by a referee, you need to, to sort of prove it a bit better than I've just said. So, the first thing you do is to prove that it is effectively an iron pair threshold. And you do that by uh, first using an increasingly large fieldanization pulse. And what I show here are four spectra. One we record by fieldanizing with 3 volt, 5 volt, 10 volt, 50 volt, and they're color coded like that. And we, in general, we put one volt to, for the MATI, but in a, uh, one case, we reduced it to 0 0.25. And what do you see? When you reduce the DC field to 0 0.25, you don't eliminate the highest Rydberg states or iron pair states, and you see them here in the black curve. And when you increase the field, you see lower and lower Rydberg states, but notice the effect is not spectacular. It's simply because the intensity, the spectrum will go further, but the intensity is entirely given by this resonances of the molecule. So this is uh, some evidence that we're looking at the field ionization of high Rydberg state. There's a better way to do this. is actually to do a measurement with a fixed uh, uh, field ionization pulse, but increase the value of the DC field and erode the spectrum from the high N side. And you see it here, so 0 0.1 volt, 3, and so on. And you see that as you increase this field, you are going to de destroy this resonance from the high N side. And then you can then use the information in this to, re to see how the, 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 um, the threshold shifts as a function of the root of the field. Uh, and then we get these values, and we have a slope. And the slope corresponds exactly to, to what Vim says. It's 5.7, I think, also. So this uh, is not quite 6, but it's 5.7. And then once you are there, you are sure that, it, that, it's, um, that you are looking at the threshold, uh, this is this, this threshold here that, in, in fact, should be actually a box. It should not have this, this intensity contrast. It should be a box, and then you erode it. But then there is this structure. And now we want to say this structure is also an iron pair series. So this is the iron, an iron pair series that will go on and it converges to another iron pair dissociation limit than the one we are looking uh, here that is located actually exactly here. So how do we prove that? And to prove that, we use something that uh, Vim has already explained. We apply a DC field, and we look at the English stellar limit. We look at the point where we cannot resolve the, this structure. And if there are iron pair sets, if we apply a field, we will blur by the Stark effect. And this is demonstrated here. So here we take spectra, where we put a DC field of increasing magnitude, and you can see that when we don't have a strive DC field, these resonances are relatively sharp. And when we increase it, they blur. And at some point, we can't resolve them. That's when we put 132 volts per centimeter. And here below, I've calculated the width of the Stark manifold that you would expect in the presence of these fields. And you see, for this, they start overlapping completely. And then we can explain these results now. See, then we have proven that what we have here, because the, that's, we calculate the English stellar limit for these states, we have proven that they are really uh, iron pair states of these quantum numbers. Now, what is the coupling mechanism? So the coupling mechanism is a, it's a bit compli it's a complicated stuff. But you have to understand that I have been partially educated by Christian Newman in, in Orsay. And for Christian Newman, there are only channels. And you have to view the world in channels. And you see a Rydberg series. It's pointless to just think of the limit, you have to think of the continuum. And I think Adam comes from the same school, so he, he will also think always in terms of channel. So and here you have drawn only channels. And the first channel that you, you have are these channels, which are called N1 and N2. These are low N Rydberg states converging to high limits. Sometimes people call them interloper. I, I don't like this term because it looks like an interloper type group of people who um, connoted negatively. Actually, we should think of them positively because it's thanks to them that we see these iron pair states. So our view is that the transition is from the ground state to this uh, low and Rydberg states. We think the uh, low Rydberg state converging to the electronically excited A and B states uh, of, of Cl2 because we are already beyond the Franconian active part of, uh, of the X state. So these states now are going to be uh, coupled to our iron pair threshold. And our iron pair threshold, we also represent them as channels. With a, with a continuum above them and a channel with a continuum above them. So the, on the other side, we have the dissociation channels. 
where you've produced two chlorine atoms. And then there are, and then you have the ionization channels, where you have one ionization channel per quantum state of the ion. And you have this soup of channels, and then you are there to try to, as an experimentalist, un uh, unravel what happens. But it's much better if you have a theoretician to do that. And I think it's great for H2. It will be a bit more tricky for Cl2, but we would be delighted if, if theory makes progress that Cl2 can be treated. So now, what is the mechanism? So if we want to, a bit of a naive chemist uh, picture. So here are the, the potential curve. That's the potential we have extracted from, from uh, our measurements. Uh, and that's the potential of the ion uh, uh, here. Where that's for, for an n Rydberg state, but it corresponds to the potential of the ion that we've also determined from experiments. And here, our ion pair states. We can calculate them. We can calculate the ion pair wave function. But the ion pair states, as we heard, they actually go down to minus infinity at the origin. And this is the nuisance. You, you, we cannot think both in terms of electronic excitation and in terms of internuclear distance at the same time. And these plots, they sort of lie in the way they are. And that's why we all are, tr are having trouble. But there, there is actually what happens when you decrease this internuclear distance, suddenly you get into the, the repulsive states that dissociates to the ground state. So what happens here, so you, you have these ion pair states, and once you're excited here, you, uh, and you excite in a region where the states are predissociative, the predissociation increases the internuclear distance spontaneously, and these states will then increase the distance, and they will be caught on the other end by the ion pair potential. And now, if you want to be naive, you say, well, here is, is the curve of the repulsive parts that will go here, perhaps. Here is the curve of the ion pair state, and there is, you can make an adiabatic potential curve for simplicity. But what you need, the ingredient you need, you need a strong transition to a low end Rydberg state that can have interaction at short range with predissociation channels. These are here. You need to catch these predissociation, uh, these dissociative curves with the ion pair states, and then the ion pair states, which just go here, and then you detect. Yeah, I'm almost finished. So now we made. A, um, we also looked at, at further channels. Actually, this the most interesting resonance is the one I've shown you. We, we actually see one other one. We looked for a long time for this triplet P1, this triplet P0. We see nothing. We really nothing. And then here we see again something. This is this resonance, and we we measured then this channel is 107.3, uh, and then we made the same set of experiment to prove that it's an ion pair. And, then, and this is here now the uh, prompt signal, and this is important to see. So what we have, we're seeing in, in this system is actually the we see this um, prompt signal everywhere, almost everywhere. Once you pass the threshold, there are lots of this of the intensity. So it's probably also interesting to look at the continuum of the ion pair states because if you believe Christian Newman or Adam, you will know that you learn also from the continuum is the same channel as the bound channel. So maybe one should spend also time looking at the continuum. But you can only do that for sure when you look at the CL minus signal. So now, that's the, the, the part of the thermochemistry. This is the boring part. So once you've measured these thresholds, and then uh, you've also measured the ionization energy of chlorine, that's what we did in the ZT spectrum, and then you know the ionization energy of the chlorine atom, you can determine both the dissociation energy of chlorine molecules and the cation. And this is the most precise value now that I know on this. So the, the, the ground state is bound by 20,000 centimeter minus 1, and the ion by 32,000. And these digits yeah, are all probably true. So this is now the, the conclusions. So what um, we have observed long-lived ion pair state of chlorine 2 by field ionization. So we I've seen, and that's maybe I haven't said enough about this, that contrary to what one would expect, we would say these ion pair states, they are all long-range objects. They should not interact. There should be no coupling between these, because it's all at long range. But we see them interact. We actually see the predissociation of this, of the series that converge to this level into that channel. So they see each other. I, I, I told first, uh, Sandro Mollet, this is not possible. And then we do it and we do it, and there is no other possibility. So we know now for sure ion pair uh, curves that converge on different thresholds can interact, although they are mostly at long range. And they probably interact by at short range with, uh, by coupling to this repulsive and uh, Rydberg state. So 
when we have determined uh, spectroscopically precise values for, for this for this ion pair uh, threshold, um, we can use that to derive the, the dissociation energy. And one thing we have to remember is that the ion pair formation is typically an extremely minor channel, so one to thousand uh, uh, probably. So the intensity we are all quite sure is drawn from predissociative Rydberg states, and the interactions uh, between ionization and dissociation channel are really extensive in, in, in Cl2, but we have seen they're also extensive in, in, in H2. But when you now, in an experiment like the one we do, where we feel the ionize, we are looking at only small windows below each threshold, and nevertheless, it's an accident when all the right things happen there. You need an intense transition to a Wittberg state just there. You need that this state, that this energy is coupled with a predissociative state, and you need to capture it at the, at the energy of one of these ion pair states. So that's why we think we, one doesn't see this at every ion pair threshold. And actually, we, we see it in 50% of the case, cases. So we have not seen these two uh, ion pair thresholds. But we have seen the series converging to, to this threshold in a, by indirectly by predissociation into the lowest ion pair. So this is, again, Sandro Molette, and this is my group, and we are supported by these uh, generous agencies. And I thank you for your attention. Any questions for Frederick? Thank you. Um, the molecular ion. Uh, uh, Dennis Cloutier has done some uh, very beautiful spectra, and we've and I've collaborated with him. We've done a complete deperturbation of the uh, double pi three halves and double delta three halves, and uh, the pi state is below the delta state at equilibrium, but above at dissociation. Spin orbit is really big, and so there's a complete picture now of the uh, th the mixing of the uh, three omega three half states. Uh, and because the spin orbit is so big, it, vibration is totally wiped out, and there's all sorts of wonderful things that you'll be able to do with those t extending to very large R. Yeah, sure, so, so our, our, our level is here put some interrogation mark. So actually, I'm not aware that this is published, or is No, it's not published. Uh -huh. um, so, so, but I would love if you send me, uh, so what, what uh, we see is actually both spin orbit components, and we have see some assignment, and it'd be interesting to see whether they compare with yours. Yes, so Dennis so. doesn't have any omega one half, and uh, so we have them quite. Uh, but now. we have the three halves, and uh, and do you know why? Why, why isn't there? Oh, I shouldn't. I don't know why he doesn't okay. see it. I okay. think, uh, uh, th but mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so that's very nice. So uh, maybe we should exchange. Yeah. Um. So in this very nice spectrum of the N equals 1800, uh, yeah, mm. the, um, you interpret this fully as ion pair uh, states. So then I wonder, yes, um, how, where is the rotation? So what is the selection mechanism that you have only one rotational quantum state here? Well, uh, well yeah, to, to, to look so at these, these lines, they have a, a width of about 0 0.8 centimeter to the minus one. The rotational constant uh, uh, of chlorine already in the ground state is much smaller than this. And then in the iron pair state is even smaller. Yeah. So the only thing we, we say is that we are in a supersonic expansion. We have low J's, and we cannot resolve the low J structure of the spectrum. So we cannot make a claim about the J. Like uh, yeah, I think we can do that in hydrogens, and uh, it was beautifully demonstrated. But here we cannot do. So we're not resolving this. Yeah, then let me extend, Frederick. Yes. You use this laser, yeah? You have a laser that is 100 times narrower. Yes. No, but the problem is that it's not operating in this range. So, so of course, we would have done the, the measurement. Uh, so we did, uh, and, but we're thinking of ways to, to do the measurement with that laser. That's the next step, of course, yeah, to see the, the, the structure nicer. So, so uh, if I understand correctly, you've uh, found a, a new coupling mechanism. Is this one way to think about this? Well, uh, it, to make ion pair states through pre-dissociation states? Is that sort I wouldn't of say one message I mean, to take I, away? Uh, if you, it's not new. So if you think, um, I mean, uh, I'll probably Adam will say more about this. I mean, you need to somehow extend the, the, the range of internet distances to do it. And the only way to do this is to 
to have a, a repulsive state. Actually, if you think of the EF state of molecular hydrogen, that's already that. Yep. Yes, so you have the, yes, that's exactly the same mechanism, but now you're just higher. So when we are not inventing this at all, it's present in, in, in the literature. However, we can now, in, in one place, you know, I think that's what is new here, uh, say that these two are coupled. Because we would, if they were not coupled, we would have never seen the structure of this series into the pseudo continuum of high ion pair state here, because they would not have been field ionized by our field. We only field ionize this range below an ionization threshold. And this threshold is way up. So the only way we can see these resonance by field ionization is that there is a coupling. And then we can then say this coupling is not, uh, the largest value for this coupling is this quantity. And that, that we extract. Here, so we have a V12 element of which we put some bounds that are compatible with our experiment. And this is, for us, I mean, to me, is the most astonishing thing. Yeah? These, these iron pair states, they really do nothing at short range. If you, and then you could say, well, I mean, they could do half something if you have, uh, if you're kind of coupling with the Wittberg states to one of these. But now it's a coupling between two of these. And that becomes really quite, Astonishing. So, so molecules find ways to always do everything that is allowed. And I, I'm sure you've looked back at your true love, which is hydrogen, to see if there is any way that s this similar coupling mechanism could be found in hydrogen. Well, in hydrogen, the problem is that you don't have many ion pair thresholds. Yes, so our dream would be a triatomic molecule. And then you would have then a diatomic molecule with all the the, the the, the, the manifold of rotational, vibrational levels plus the, the, the negative atomic ion or the opposite. And that would be a bliss, and we have looked for them, but the, you have so many channels that we have not, uh, probably there is not much intensity in any, and we have not succeeded. But if someone sees these ion tests in the triatomic molecule, that would be really fantastic. Well, John Hebron has done tips on H2S. So that's a starting point. Yes. The tips. That, that's true. I mean, yeah, yeah. But you, you would like to, to see the, the, the resolved structure and, and extract things from them. But yeah. again, there is no reason why, in principle, you shouldn't see them. Uh -huh. we, are, we have been less lucky than John. But maybe we should go back to H2S. Or maybe you are doing this? Uh, uh. Yeah. Well, we didn't resolve. Yeah. Um, and it was a science too. Uh, it's not that I wanted to add about the different molecules. Indeed, it's as a single. So that, um, but you, and you say the, the CL case is very weak. It's like when Jen has only one percent in the uh, F. The ion pair channel is stronger than the in the photoionization. That's that's an interesting case. Well, we have a general, a general, general see that you need these types of coupling, but you know molecules, you can never do a theory that is right for all molecules that predicts all the coupling in the series. Molecules are coincidental. You just need to recognize the principles, and once you have them, you are prepared to say, oh, this molecule behaves according to this case, and then who started that? Yeah, so you have A, B, C, D, and, and you have patterns and things like that. But molecules are difficult, yeah. Sure, I suppose. Um, I, I recognize then this, this sort of coupling between the two ion pair channels. Um, and you simulated it by adding the resonance to two broad resonances. Well, I mean, you have to, to, that's no theory. That's uh, just for us to, to, when we were trying to understand or look at where the interloper was in the spectrum. But what is interesting that you look, if you, if you look at the correspondence between this addition, it's not exact. 
And actually, you don't expect it to be exact. For instance, when you have the perturbed position, the center of the perturbed position, you see a maximum perturbation in the spectrum. And that corresponds precisely to, to, to what Elizabeth showed, and, and I think the calculation right. of, uh, of Adam show for hydrogen. So when you have this perturbation, you perturb the, the, the regularity of that series. And that's why, in the first place, we had to spend so much energy to prove that it was an iron pair stays by, by the English stellar limit. Otherwise, we would not have needed to do so. Right. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on the uh, H minus, uh, the, the one single state there. So uh, when, it, it, do people feel that all of this phenomenon would not take place in the triplet manifold of, say, H2? I mean, the, the, you know, we have a comparable triplet manifold. And yeah. so, so does anybody have any comments on that? I have a, a comment. You couldn't. The triplets, the structure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, an H minus could have a triplet. I mean, yeah, that's well the it. point. But that, that's my point. It doesn't. Yes. That's my point. It doesn't. Therefore, if one were to access triplet states and do similar experiments, we wouldn't see any of the effects of heavy well, uh, uh, Rydberg's that true? You cannot say it doesn't. It has, a, it has a triplet continuum, at least. I mean, when you have to. So, so, okay. I can speak to that to some extent because I was just looking at some old Sylvie Manier papers on ion pair character in the uh, single electron alkalis. And for the most part, it's only in the uh, singlet sigma states. However, uh, in sodium, um, you can actually follow uh, a number of triplet pi states that show obvious Rydberg, um, excuse me, ion pair character. It turns out the reason is the negative ion has a positive energy resonance, which is a triplet p state. Mm -hmm. And those perturbations actually correlate to the positive energy resonance and not to the ground state of the negative ion. So in, in hydrogen, there's no counterpart. And um, as far as I know, the triplets are unaffected uh, by the. So, so, yeah. so I, I can just make, maybe just make a comment about this. So in, in hydrogen, the singlet and the triplet are still really quite separated spectroscopically. So they are two families of states, a bit like auto and para. However, Auto H2, if you go to the Rydberg states beyond n equal 30, and to the, to the D and F states, the hyperfine interaction totally mix the singlet and, and the triplet. Yeah, so so there is, if you interpret the spectrum of, of H2, and you are at n uh, values be, be beyond n equal 30, they are singlet triplet mixed totally by, by, the, by the hyperfine interaction. That we know spectroscopically 100% sure. Yeah, that would Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's a good question about the triplet, and even if, if the triplet doesn't exist as H minus n, there is a continuum and it yes. couples everything. So believe Christian Newman. I mean, everything, all the channels are coupled. So your conclusion is that we, if one did the experiment by a triplet states, one could see potentially see these ion pairs. Many it would be interesting to look at it and. <coughs> Sorry. Yes, it's a resonance. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was saying. You need to include the continuum. Yes, the, absolutely. How many milliseconds? Oh, that long? Wow. Okay. That, that sort of answers it, I think. Yeah. So this has been an interesting discussion, but I think we should thank uh, Frederick.